Hey everyone, Kitana here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Today we're going to find out when you will get into a relationship or get married based on your birth chart. And with Valentine's Day just a few short days away, a love is in the air, ironically enough, during Aquarius season, but that's another story. In this video, we're getting into the specific timing of a relationship manifesting into your life or marriage manifesting into your life based on your natal chart transits. And by the end of the video, you will figure out how to predict a relationship happening in your life based on your astrology. And before we get into these top five indicators, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. The first indicator, and if not the strongest indicator to predict marriage in your chart, is by looking at the transit of Jupiter in your natal chart. And we know Jupiter as the most benefic energy, so seeing where it transits in your chart does affect whether or not you'll get into a relationship or not, but specifically the house you want to look at is of course the seventh house. The seventh house is the house of marriage and partnerships, so when you have Jupiter, the planet that is benefic, transit your seventh house, a relationship is very likely to manifest for you, and even more so a marriage can manifest for you or engagement. However, it's not just the seventh house that is relevant for a relationship manifesting for you when it comes to Jupiter's transit, it's also the houses aspecting the seventh house. So if Jupiter is transiting the first house, third house, seventh house, of course, or 11th house, then those four houses are relevant for a relationship manifesting for you. Jupiter transiting the first house aspects the seventh house by opposition, Jupiter transiting the third house aspects the seventh house by trine, and then Jupiter transiting the 11th house also aspects the seventh house by trine. So those are the four aspects or four houses specifically to look out for when it comes to Jupiter's transit. And as we speak right now in this present day, Jupiter is in Aquarius. So if you have an Aquarius first house, Aquarius third house, Aquarius seventh house or 11th house, then you're feeling this Jupiter transit specifically in your life right now. And that brings us into the second indicator, which has to do with Saturn. And usually we think of Saturn as the planet that deals with obstacles and delays and has this negative connotation, but Saturn also deals with stability. It deals with longevity. And although Jupiter can bring great things, it is a benefic planet, it can bring a great relationship, Saturn is the planet that will make that relationship last. And so Saturn transiting the 7th, 11th, or 1st house also might manifest a relationship for you. Again, Saturn is that planet that represents stability and longevity, so it will bring a relationship that will last if it's transiting your 7th house, 1st house, 11th house, sometimes 3rd house, but mainly the 1st house, mainly the 7th house, mainly the 11th house. And again, Saturn is in the same sign as Jupiter right now, so Saturn's in Aquarius, it'll stay there for a few years. Saturn stays in one house of our charts for about two to three years. And if you have an Aquarius 7th house, Aquarius 1st house, Aquarius 11th house, then you do uh, benefit from this transit. You might have a relationship manifest for you in this transit with Saturn in those houses if you have Aquarius in the 1st, 7th, or 11th house at this moment. And that brings us into the third indicator, which is such a mini gold mine when it comes to predicting relationships, predicting marriage, that I feel like isn't as talked about as our regular transits that we're always looking at, and that is looking at your solar return chart. And if you don't know what a solar return chart is, basically every year on your birthday, you get a new birth chart or you get a birth chart that represents your year ahead. Now, this is a chart that starts and begins on your birthday and ends on your next birthday. So it's not like a calendar year birth chart, but like your birthday literally and then it calculates the year ahead based on this birth chart and there's a lot of other videos about solar returns and articles etc but essentially it's the birth chart of the year for you and in that birth chart it tells you the themes of your year the experiences you might have during that year based on this yearly birth chart so in that solar return chart you really want to look at the seventh house again the seventh house is most relevant here in this entire video and if you have your sun in the seventh house of your solar return chart a relationship might manifest for you and not only the sun but the moon as well venus jupiter or the north node essentially in the seventh house of your solar return chart not your natal chart but your solar return chart if you have any major planet really in that chart, if you have a strong seventh house for the year in your solar return chart, then a relationship is very likely to manifest for you. And this is great to look at just in case you 
don't have the transits I just mentioned, just in case you don't have Jupiter in your seventh house, you don't have Saturn in your 11th house, you don't have any of those planets. But if you look in your solar return chart, you can see like, okay, I can have a relationship manifest this year for marriage because I have a strong seventh house in my solar return chart. And if you don't have your solar return chart yet, I'll leave a calculator down below. Astro.com has a pretty accurate solar return chart calculator. And you can see your solar return chart for this year, maybe next year, and see if your seventh house is strong with the planets I just mentioned. Now we're on to the fourth indicator, which has to do with the planet Venus. Now, how can we talk about relationships without talking about Venus? This is the major significator in astrology of relationships when it comes to the planet Venus. Now, Venus is representative of relationships in everyone's chart, but it's really specifically representative of a wife and a man's chart. It's not only representative of a wife, but it's really strongly representative of a wife. So if you're a man watching this, this is really relevant for you as well. And in general with Venus, if it's transiting your seventh house, of course, and if it's transiting your first house, a relationship will manifest for you. Now, I won't include the other houses in this point because Venus is really relevant to the first house transit, and seventh house transit when it comes to relationships or marriage. And the catch with Venus is that it stays in one house, it stays in one sign for about a month. So this is a really short term transit compared to the other ones I talked about where Jupiter lasts a year, Saturn lasts two years, um, and Venus lasts about a month. So whenever Venus is in your first house throughout the year, Venus is in your seventh house throughout the year, it's usually about a month. And during that time, you can expect to meet new people that might be a significant partner later. You might meet your significant other later. You can even look back in your chart transits if you're in a relationship right now and see if you met your partner during Venus first house transit, Venus seventh house transit. And as we speak right now, Venus is in Aquarius. So if you have an Aquarius first house or Aquarius seventh house, you might feel this, but Venus is gonna go into Pisces, then Aries. So you can expect a relationship to manifest whenever Venus transits those signs in your chart. And specifically, if you have those signs in your first or seventh house, a relationship might manifest for you. And now we're on to the fifth and final indicator, which has to do with the North node. Now the north node stays in one sign for 18 months. The north and south node stays in a sign axis for 18 months. So technically it's kind of a long transit, but specifically if the north node is transiting the seventh house, 11th house, or third house, a relationship might manifest for you during this time. But what I will say about the north node transiting these houses of 3, 7, 11 is that a relationship is definitely meant to manifest during this time. However, it might not be that permanent unless you have Jupiter working in this formula or if you have Saturn working here as well. So the North Node is a bit more of a temporary energy. It brings things to you very quickly and abundantly in an amplified way, but you have to have other stronger planets involved to have a strong marriage or strong relationship manifest for you, but it does pretty much guarantee or predict a relationship happening if it's long, if it lasts for you. It depends on Jupiter and Saturn also at the moment of that North Node transit. And as of right now in 2021, the North Node is in Gemini. So if you have a Gemini third house, Gemini seventh house or 11th house, this is more relevant for you at this moment. However, the North Node does change signs every 18 months and it changes later this year. And it's been in Gemini since May of last year. So a relationship might've manifested for you anytime last year during 2020, anytime this year, and it still might manifest for you during this year. Whether or not it will last long term depends on your own personal birth chart and if you have stronger planets aspecting to strengthen that north node transit. But in general, houses 3, 7, 11, if you have the north node there for this time being or any time it's there, then a relationship is likely to manifest for you and even for some people engagement or marriage. And if you want to find out what your spouse will be like, what their characteristics might be, I have a couple videos on my channel predicting the characteristics and traits of your spouse. So I'll link those down below if you guys are curious. And if you missed your 2021 prediction, I'll link those down below as well. And over on Instagram, I have the Venus signs, all 12 venus signs if you want to know more about your venus sign head to my instagram at astrokit and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel happy valentine's day to you guys and i'll see you in my next video